How's it going, everyone? My name is Lionel, and welcome to Lift Your Spirits. You are a college student trying to rush the last of your assignments when spooky happenings start happening around the campus. But ghosts aren't real. Anyway, let's find out what this is about. Alone on a Friday night, and I'm spending it here. My fingers were sluggish as they typed out the last bit of conclusion needed to finish off my paper. I didn't even bother spell checking the rest, my hand dragging the cursor across to close the document. All right, time to submit it. I topped out my regards to Mr. Holtman. Kindly find the attached file of assignment, your student, Lionel. Stifling a yawn, I turned on my phone to check the time. 2.53 a.m. Eh, still pretty early. The universal experience of losing sleep and getting eye backs as a college student came to grace me in its hole once again, it seems. Well, it doesn't get any easier. At least it's the weekend. Still doesn't get any easier. Turning off the computer, it suddenly hit me now how quiet it was without my fingers tapping away at the keyboard. Everyone else had left. The campus was open 24-7, but who else was dumb enough to push their luck in submitting their assignment this late? And consider myself lucky Mr. Holtman gave me the extended deadline, otherwise I'd be screwed. Still, there were also the rumors. Disembodied voices echoing through the empty rooms. Heavy footsteps shuffling down the halls. Those who were lucky claimed to see a black silhouette skulking around the vending machine at the end of the corridor, staring at them. I wasn't the superstitious type, but I had to admit, the eerie silence of being the only person here gave me the creeps. I was recalling all the gossip spread around the student body when I was, when the sound made me perk up. What was that? I glanced behind me over the monitors to see if someone had come in. Nope. I ignored the goosebumps rising on my arms as I gathered up my items into my bag. Superstitious or no, I've done what I came here for. Time to go. I shambled to the elevators and tapped the button. It rumbled to life, slowly making its way up to my floor. Just a couple more minutes and I'm out of here, I assured myself. I don't know why, but I found myself constantly checking behind me, as if expecting someone there. Yet it's always empty every time I look. I tapped the button some more. The hair at the back of my neck stood, as if I'm being watched. Like, do people's hairs just like stand up from feeling watched? That's never happened to me. And you guys are always watching me. I clenched my fists, ignoring how sweaty they felt in my pockets. Someone's breathing. Is there someone behind me? Oh, it's the elevator. I jumped. All right. The door slid open as I released my breath. I didn't realize I was holding. I didn't even consider looking back as I stepped inside, refusing to turn around until the doors closed. The chipper background music they played calmed me down somewhat. I'm always in disbelief they were still playing it at this hour. Almost. I pressed the button for the ground floor, the elevator moving with a small jolt. With nothing to do but wait, I stared as the numbers slowly descend. The lull of the elevator was starting to make me sleepy. I thought of things I could do once I got home, just to distract myself for the rest of the ride. A shower for sure. Microwave dinner probably. Uh... Okay, something's up with the elevator. I blinked up at the flickering lights. The elevator shuddered and came to an abrupt halt. The music cut out. Ah, damn it, I was vibing! I tried the button for the ground floor, then the rest. Unresponsive. Pushing the intercom button gave nothing but static. Uh, hello? Nah, 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 this, this can't be happening. Take a moment to compose myself, I called out. Uh, is anyone out there? I'm stuck in here. Help! I started slamming the doors as panic took hold. There had to be someone out there. Help! Please! I'm in here! I didn't stop for a good minute, getting more and more desperate as tears welled up in my eyes. Why? Why now? Why me? I knocked my forehead against the door in a slump, ready to curl up and cry. This sucks. I was about to turn before I felt a chill run down my spine. The air felt heavy. Is this claustrophobia setting in? I didn't think I had a fear of closed spaces. Unless... That was a raspy moan. Who is moaning behind me? I turned my head and screamed. 
Across me was a growing blotch of darkness, an oozing mass that seems to melt through the walls. Why is the growing blotch moaning? I scrambled away, my back flat against the doors. A hand emerged from the writhing form, grasping at the edges, foul smelling black ichor dropping from its fingers. Another arm followed suit, clinging to the other side. I couldn't look away. I couldn't find my voice to scream. A face took shape. A pair of hollow eyes and a manic grin with several teeth. It seemed to smile directly at me. I blacked out. Hey. Wake up. Hey. Hey. I heard a voice, panicked and flustered from above me. Oh, you're so cute! A person who was looming over me, visibly worried as I blinked back to consciousness. You're alive! I, I couldn't check for a pulse, so anyway, um, are you alright? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I feel so much better now. You are cute! Phew, I'm glad. Didn't mean to scare you back there. I realized I'm still in the elevator, but now with a stranger twiddling their thumbs in front of me. They were taller than me, looming a few good inches past my head. Their limbs looked even more awkward in the baggy sweater they had. I wasn't sure if they forgot to wash their makeup or if they just haven't slept for three days straight. Possibly both. I realized they were staring at me as well. Their eyes focused on me a little too long, as if they'd forgotten how to blink. Uh, so... I suddenly remember the last thing I saw. A creepy shadow from the walls. Before you were here, there was... There was something crawling out of the walls. It was moaning. Um, did you hear any moaning? I, I know it sounds the same, but I swear! It was moaning! It looked straight out of a horror movie, and it was moaning! It's a really weird horror movie! The stranger looks nervous. Crap. They must think I'm nuts. Don't look at me like that! No, I, I believe you, for sure. You saw it too? Well, sort of. Uh, sorry, I was trying to be sneaky. That must have been uncomfortable to watch, huh? Come again? What are you saying? Well, I heard you yelling for help, and I couldn't just leave you alone, so I did the next best thing I could. Wait, are you saying that was you? Why were you moaning? Uh, yes, in a way. There's really no easy way to say this. I'm not alive, not the way you are. They mean... You mean like... A ghost? The stranger lit up appreciatively. Basically, yeah. You've heard the rumors, right? Well, it's me! In the flesh! Or unflesh. Well, sans the flesh. Ah, uh, well... I believe them. I'm, I'm not gonna stick my hand inside a stranger. Like, what kind of person do you take me for? Ugh, I'd only do it consensually. Consent is important. I believe them. I feel like this isn't the worst situation to be meeting a ghost for the first time. The stranger gave a sigh of relief. Thank you for trusting me. Uh, I didn't ask for your name, but I already know that it's Lionel. How did you... I've been watching you for a while. Ooh, you've been watching... Why were you moaning? Excuse me! Tonight! I I've been watching you for a while tonight! It it's not safe to be alone this late. I, I would know. Before I could ask any further, they straightened. Anyway, I stuck around to see you write your paper. I, I don't necessarily agree with hy hypothesis, but interesting, not nevertheless. Uh, well, thank you, I, I think. They gave a shy smile. No problem. This wasn't the way I was expecting my night to go, but I guess the sooner I accepted it, the better. I should probably ask for their name instead of calling them stranger. You know my name, but what about yours? I want to know whose name I'm screaming tonight. Uh, <laughs> oh, they looked away, fingers picking at their sleeve. I, I don't remember. I know who I was and what I did when I was alive, but not my name. Strange, isn't it? Have you ever thought of picking one yourself? Their eyes widened as if the thought never occurred to them. I, I never needed a name, but if I were to have one, I've always liked the way Alma sounds. Oh, you're adorable, Alma. It's perfect. You freaking adorable, Alma. Their smile widened. Thank you, Lionel. Alma went back to twiddling their fingers. 
We stood in silence for a while, gauging on what to say next. I kept glancing back at their heads, worried if they'd feel as solid as they looked. They knew I was staring, but didn't seem to mind, waiting patiently in front of me. My thoughts were running wild from sleep deprivation and shock to actually form words past our introductions, to be honest. They started humming softly, as if to fill the silence. That's when it hit me. For a ghost, they could easily be a student, just like me. I have to ask, how did you... Ah... Uh, Alma had a knowing look in their eyes. Oh man, it's honestly kind of embarrassing. Uh, how embarrassing? I, I insist. I will insist. Despite having no blood th flowing through their veins, their cheeks seemed to darken. Well, we, we don't have to get into it, but I really want to know. Please? I... They hesitated before nodding. Promise you won't make fun of me? I promise. Okay. So, I was staying late, working on an assignment, just like you. No one was around, even back then. I was known as a loner most of the time. It, it didn't bother me. While I was working, I got thirsty. No big deal. So, I headed over to the vending machine for a drink. They paused, handshaking. They clasped at their wrists and twisted before continuing. Just a soda. Not too much to us, right? I paid for the damn thing, but... Somehow, my hand got stuck in a dip of the hand got stuck in the dispenser. What are you doing, step bro? Okay. So I pulled and pulled, and well, we struggled a bit before I waved them to continue. It fell, my whole body being crushed under the weight. I couldn't even cry out for help. Oh god, I'm so sorry. And the whole time, my hand was still stuck on that thing. Not that I could even tell. I think my wrist was beyond saving at that point. They sunk into themselves. I died. Try to get some cheap soda. How pathetic is that? It's not. I'm, I'm sorry that happened to you. I put my hand over theirs. It passed right through, giving an icy cold chill at my fingertips, but Alma seemed to appreciate it nevertheless. They looked up at me, their nervous hands finally coming to a stop. Am I about to have a, go a, a ghost um, romantic interest? A ghostly romantic interest? I've never told anyone about it before. I didn't think it would feel this freeing. Thank you. You you know, I I think you're really a great person. Don't make me blush! God damn it, Alma! I wanna help you get out of here. I tilted my head. How are you going to do that? I can try some things. That is, if you trust me. I There's two trust Almas here. I have a feeling this is a little sus. They clapped their hands excitedly. Okay, here we go. You might want to hold on to something. Before I could ask further, the elevator began to drop. My heart plunged into my throat as my weight shifted upwards. Elma! Hang on, let me focus. The buttons for each floor flashed beside me. I closed my eyes shut and decided to trust them. It felt like a roller coaster heading straight to the ground. The air whizzed around me. I gripped my teeth and clenched my hands, knuckles probably white if I bothered to look. And just like that, it stopped. I yelped as the elevator jolted. I landed on my ass with a smack. I blinked my eyes open to see Alma clapping excitedly. They looked over to see me on the floor and gestured towards the doors. They creaked open as if manually pulled apart by an unseen force. My jaw dropped as I realized they really did bring me to the ground floor. You really did it. I did! I did! I never got to do that before! I couldn't believe my eyes. I stood and threw my arms around Alma only to completely pass through them. They yelped and backed away to the wall. Give a signal before you do that. I don't appreciate feeling hands inside of me. It's gross. <laughs> oh God, I'm, I'm so sorry. I gathered myself and stepped through the doors, Alma following suit. Sure enough, the lobby was empty. The clock on the wall indicating it was close to 4 a.m. now. Well, I guess this is it. I turned to see them trying hard not to reach for their hands. Fingers tw twitching to intertwine with one another. It all happened so fast. It sunk in that now I could leave and go home right now if I wanted to. Alma, thank you. I appreciate it. They nod understandingly. I stood there for a moment as they looked at me before averting their eyes. They were waiting for me to leave. I grasped at my phone inside my pocket, mustering the courage to ask what I was about to ask. Would you ever want to hang out again? They did a double take. 
Huh? Would you want to hang out? Yes! But... Why would you want to? Why wouldn't I? I like you. Once again, their cheeks darken despite being them. I like you too. Oh, I have a ghost romantic partner. Oh. Yeah, I'd love to hang out again. Great. Preferably when I'm, you know, not stuck and helpless in an elevator. My heart skipped a beat as they laugh lightly. Preferably, of course. I'll see you next week. Yeah, don't worry about a time or place. I can always find you, wherever you are in the building. Kind of unsettling, but okay. Stay safe, Lionel. I waved and headed towards the entrance, pulling out my phone to call for a driver from one of my apps. When I turned to look back, Alma was already gone. Friends for life. Or more. <gasps> ooh, woo. <ooh. laughs> oh, God, that was amazing. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to play for yourself, the game is in the description below. And, hey, just give the developer some love, why don't you? As always, if you want to see more of these videos, subscribe to the channel. And as always, I will be seeing you in the very near future. This is Lionel, signing off. Ciao.